Hi, this is just a quick little explanation of a rig uh, that I'm creating right now. And specifically the goal that I'm doing right now is to create a standardized rig that I can use with all my different characters. So as you look over here, um, I call this uh, Seeker, is the name of this guy here, and he's got um, three different um, bone layers, the uh, three-quarter left, front, and three-quarter right. Um, but all of them have the same head turn in them. So if I go to the head turn, I can see the head turning up and down in all of these uh, layers. Now I do have a body turn bone, and so I may eventually put all of these into a single rig, but for right now, um, I'm just using them as uh, three separate uh, angles. And the key capabilities that I have is if I move the uh, root bone, we see that uh, you know the, the feet are attached. They have target bones with the independent angles for the feet. And we've got smart, uh, smart bones so that the knee is affected properly. Um, and the elbows and arms. And I've got an eye size bone, a head turn bone, and these kinds of things. So first let me tell you why I'm doing this. Um, and the reason is, is because once I have the fully rigged character, all of the bones and the points and everything are, are bound and with the smart uh, bones and everything else like that in a way that I like. So if we think about this just a little bit, I can create any character simply by going into layer zero and manipulating uh, the points and uh, maybe changing the styles and things like that. Now I may have to, if I have smart bones, I may have to make some tweaks there, but in general I don't have to create everything anew and bind everything anew and create a new skeleton every time. I just uh, manipulate this, uh, these layers and these shapes because if we think about it, these are just shapes. The shapes happen to look like a person, but they're just shapes, and so we can manipulate the points. So let me show you how I'm doing my particular rig, uh, in case it helps some of those who are just starting out with rigging. Obviously, those people who have done it a whole lot can do you know, whatever you want to do. Um, so I'm going to show you the naming. I'm using specific names for each of the bones, and the reason I'm doing this is because if I come up with a different structure, um, I want to be able to rebind the points. What I mean by that is if I copy uh, layers from one to another, the uh, animation will stay intact, um, but the binding of the points is done by bone identity or ID, not by the bone name, but I've got a script that I wrote that will actually rebind them properly. Now, if you set up a skeleton and use it, the same skeleton, for everything, then you won't have to do that rebinding. But if you've named the, the bones properly, it's fairly easy to rebind. So that's what I do. And so let's just go through the body and then I'll get to the head in a little bit. So the way that I do it, um, I don't really call left and right according to the actual characters left and right and worry about the stage directions and everything. I just uh, am using left because it's on the left side and right because it's on the right side. So uh, when I have the left collarbone, it's not his left. It's just the one that happens to be on the left. That just happens to be easier for me. You can do whatever you want, of course. Um, I'm here um, using lowercase letters just to make it easy that I don't have any kind of mixture in, in, uh, my, for my script so that it will find things easily. So I've got the collarbones, and I've got a chest bone, and I just call this one stomach, and I've got the root bone. Now if I turn on the parenting, we can see that pretty much most, all these bones connect to that root bone as you would expect. And then all my head controls go to the head bone, which we'll talk about a little bit later. Um, everything else uh, is parented as you might expect. So as we come down, I'm going to ignore these bones right here because they're actually controlling the cape. And most characters are not going to have a cape and then I've got some for the belt, so I'm going to ignore those for right now. They just happen to be named Bone 55 or whatever happened to be the number at the time, uh, but that really doesn't matter very much because, again, it's specific to this character. And the thing that I'm trying to show here is this uh, standardized skeleton. So I've got a left upper arm, uh, left 
uh, forearm, left hand. Then, of course, uh, I have uh, a bone for the hips, a bone for the right upper leg and left upper leg, um, right lower leg, left lower leg, and of course I have the similar uh, right upper arm, right forearm, and right hand as you'd expect. I'm using two bones in the foot, so I've got a right foot, right toe, left foot, left toe, and then a target, right leg target, left leg target. So all of that's pretty standard, what you might expect. It's just the fact that I actually name those bones in a certain way. And I use the exact same convention for all of the other uh, skeletons, so that if I moved uh, shapes over or created different characters, um, they're all consistently named. So now for my rig, I actually use a, a left hand position, and what that is about is that is using switch layers um, to do the hands, um, and the same thing for the right. I just have these switch layers to control the hands. Um, so let's move in close to the, to the head, and I have a neck bone. So let me show you, that's the neck, and then the center one for the head. Um, then, of course, I've got uh, squash and stretch. I've got an eye size. That's for looking the surprise kind of look and uh, things like that. Up, down, and head turn. But in the face, here's how I am doing the faces. I'm using switch layers for the mouth. But for the eyes, I have uh, the eyebrows are controlled by two bones. So I just have left brow one and left brow two, right brow one and right brow two. And then for all the eyes all together, when I move this bone, it moves both eyes together. But I have also have a separate bone for the left eye and the right eye. And then I have some bones around the uh, eye shape, and that just makes it a little bit easier to make um, uh, more specific eye shapes if I have sadness or trying to express emotions. And I can save those as actions if I want. Um, but the naming, again, I'm doing the naming so that if I need to rebind the points, um, I can easily do that. So I just loop around. So this is left eye one, left eye two, left eye three, four, five, and six. Same thing for the right eye. One, two, three, four, five, and six. And so that's how I name my bones. Uh, so again, I'm just sharing my current approach to these things and see if it might help other people. And if you've got uh, a different way that you do things that you want to share, uh, I'd be interested in that. Um, but um, the main reason that I'm doing this uh, with this consistent naming and everything is to make it uh, very easy to um, actually take this character once he's fully rigged um, to and fully uh, constructed, I can actually just tweak him and turn him into a completely different character by just moving the points in the shapes.